We are joined now by the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, North Carolina Congressman Patrick McHenry. Good morning. Good to have you here in person. Great to be here. Uh, I want to go into the banking crisis, but I first want to ask you about a biz bit of business in regard to what Speaker McCarthy has said. He's directing Congress to investigate, he tweeted, whether federal funds are being used by the state of New York where a grand jury may soon indict the 45th president. Um, why is he issuing this threat? And isn't this kind of congressional investigation just using federal funds from U.S. taxpayers on a political errand? Well, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to Speaker McCarthy overnight uh, since that tweet, um, nor Chairman Comer of the Oversight and Investigations Committee, nor Chairman Jordan mm -hmm. of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, I'm chair of the House Financial Services Committee. I've been caught up in a bit of the uh, turbulence yeah. in the banking sector. But you're one of the top leading Republicans. I mean, do you agree with federal money being used on a state investigation or what, casting doubt? Or, I mean, what is here, it about? The question here, and I think the viable question for the American people, is whether or not you have a progressive prosecutor using the justice system to go after political enemies for a political splash. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seems to be the case here. Uh, with uh, the Manhattan DA. But as I said, I spent most of my time focused on right. what, what's at hand. Uh, but that's, you think that's it's a what good it looks use of like. taxpayer money? Well, I think it's a questionable use of taxpayer money to allow a prosecutor to use the justice system to go after uh, somebody that. That's a problem for New Yorkers, isn't right. it? But the federal but it's government. Becoming, here. It's becoming a problem for Americans when you see people targeted. Um, uh -huh. in the, um, and, and that's the reason why Speaker McCarthy set up the Weaponization of Government Committee yeah. uh, for the, within the uh, yeah. uh, Judiciary Committee. And that's the reason why Jim Jordan is, is leading that, that effort. But, but you're trying now to focus on things of substance that are at crisis level uh, in the banking sector. Um, I, should one of the two big-to-fail banks, the large, systemically important banks, be able to step in here and buy up a troubled bank like First Republic? Uh, I think all options should be on the table. Uh, that's what I'm considering legislatively. That's what I would encourage the administration to consider as well. Is there, there anything that would things. block that kind of white knight rescue? Um, well, that's what we have to get to the bottom of. At the moment, I think it's important that American people have confidence in the financial system and their bank. And I think that is the imperative right now. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I supported the uh, FDIC and uh, Fed's and yeah. Treasury's decision uh, last Sunday night. I thought it was an imperative for the country. Now, what I need to get to the bottom of investigatively in Congress mm -hmm. is the who, what, when, where, why, and how of these bank failures and the, the decisions signature made over. Signature and Silicon Valley. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then over the, and the decision made over the weekend. Mm -hmm. We saw a private sector response to help support a bank. Right. Was that a viable option last weekend, or was there an ideological lens that prevented them uh, from taking these institutions and making it uh, less turbulent for America? That's why I was asking the question I asked you, because what you're suggesting there is that the Biden administration uh, didn't want a big bank to come to the rescue here. Um, we don't know that. And we're now in a continued crisis. Do, you don't have an answer to... I, I don't have the facts on whether or not the FDIC had a viable buyer yeah. last weekend. We have press reports of two, two banks that were at the table. We have comments from other bankers that they were prevented from bidding. Mm -hmm. I don't have the facts. And until I have the facts, I'm not going to draw a conclusion, especially but you're in a suggesting it like could have made things worse. Well, I think we know we had a very rough week for yeah. American banking, and we la uh, lost confidence. And, and I think that is that raises the questions of what happened last weekend. Well, in terms of what happens right now, should a too big to fail bank be able to buy up one of these banks like First Republic to 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 stop the bleeding? All options should be on the table. You did hear uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren uh, suggest that she would favor um, a congressional initiative to lift the insurance on un currently uninsured deposits, those above two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. She mm -hmm. put a cap of two to ten million dollars for how long? How big? <laughs> Who does that apply to? Um, how would you craft that? Do you, do you see a chance to work here? Well, it's the first time I've heard a proposal like that. Uh, and I have not had a single conversation with the White House or the uh, administration about uh, deposit insurance changing the levels. Mm -hmm. What I will do, though, legislatively and in an oversight function is determine whether or not we need to address uh, the FDIC deposit level. We did it after the last financial crisis, yeah. raising from 100000 to 250000 We had a temporary program mm -hmm. post-financial crisis to support deposits. 
to ensure that folks had confidence in their local bank. What I want to know is the trade-off, though, of moral hazard, of having more risk-taking in the financial sector, mm -hmm. and also the impact it would have on community banks. We have far fewer community banks now than we've had in generations. Uh, that's a significant problem for competition in the uh, financial services arena. The area we're seeing the pressure right now is that mid-size, though, not the community banks. Yes. And so, those mid-sized banks yeah. have regulatory capital requirements, significant capital requirements, that put them in similar positions with their peers. Yeah. We have to look at that as well. In this divided Washington, is there anything that could actually pass, besides the clawbacks, which I assume is very popular on both sides of the aisle? Well, look, what we do know is uh, uh, depositors are made whole in America in a bank failure, that bondholders are wiped yeah. out, those stockholders are wiped out, and the executives get right. wiped out. No one so wants to use the term government back. bailout. I get that. Well, but no, we're in we... the midst of an ongoing, potentially rolling crisis. Could something like FDIC insurance actually pass right now, lifting that cap? It's all options should be on the table, and that's how I'm approaching it. But if we do this, we have to understand there are trade-offs. It is not mm -hmm. a pure play of a, allowing a larger uh, yeah. set of insurance coverage. It costs the financial system significantly, yes. and especially community banks. We need to look very carefully at this. But stepping back, yeah. the question of what the FDIC did to backstop deposits of these two institutions is in the nature of the law we right. created 90 years ago to create the yes. FDIC fund. It is a mutual insurance fund, and the industry pays for that, yes. uh, not the taxpayers. And I think they acted appropriately. You're calling in the head of the FDIC and the vice chair for supervision from the Fed's Board of Governors. What is your intent? Um, and will you call up Mary Daly, the head of the San Francisco Federal Reserve? Uh, well, first things first, uh, the heads of these agencies, uh, the, the vice chair for supervision at the Fed and the chair of the FDIC, we need to understand the decisions that were made last weekend. Um, uh, on from Thursday until Sunday night yeah. on whether or not there's a viable private sector solution. We also need to understand the underlying causes of the collapse of these banks, mm -hmm. and we're going to get to that. The question of the San Francisco Fed is a question of supervision. Yep. We need to get to the bottom of whether or not this is a supervisory problem, a regulatory problem, a bank mismanagement problem, perhaps all three. Mm -hmm. in, in, all, in, all, in all frankness. I want to ask you about uh, some of the things being said. You, populist politics around banking, everyone engages it in. It never ends. It never ends. Um, but the two banks that did fail, they were in New York and they were in California. Conservatives like Mike Pence, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, your colleague James Comer, um, they're throwing around terms like woke banks advancing the liberal agenda. They're blaming diversity and environmental initiatives. Isn't there a danger in casting a very substantive, active crisis in terms of a culture war. I think everyone's preaching their book, and uh, that's what we heard in your first segment. Right. Um, everyone's but you, preaching, you agree that's preaching not helpful. Their book, and their book is well. If they thought it was a problem a month ago, they apply it to this circumstance. That's happening on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the question of ESG and these initiatives, my environmental. Fellow social uh, and governance, right, right, and the encouragement of companies to take that into consideration with their investment. Yes. So there is, there has been a lot of political debate about that. There is substance here. And if the management of these institutions was much more concerned about politics mm -hmm. or the environmental or social goods, mm -hmm. rather than the governance regulations, ensuring you had a capable board, you had proper oversight of yeah. people's deposits, then this shows they had mismanagement. So I think there, there are natural have questions that, that, we that, have. That, that, I mean, there wasn't a risk officer fully at Silicon Valley Bank for an extended period of time. Yes, and you had very few people that had banking expertise on the board mm. of the bank. So there are some questions, natural questions we should raise. But that's, bad, should... Mis that's bad management. That's yes. not woke banking, whatever but that means. But as I said, whatever your book of business was as a politician yeah. a month ago, a year ago, is applied to this general circumstance. What I'm trying to do is get to the details of what happened right. and have whether, well, and then determine whether or not there's a proper legislative response. Yes. But when, when you have a hammer, you look at the world as a nail. Right. And that's what we see out of politicians. I'm trying yes. to be of substance and focus on the issues at hand and make sure that we fix the problems. Yes. So President Biden has asked Congress so far, maybe he asked for other things. The only thing he's asked for so far is to be able to claw back uh, salaries of those or pay to 
executives of failed banks and then to ban them from working in the financial industry. This already exists for the great big banks. Um, Senator Warren supports that. Does that pass, Congress? Uh, well, it's something I'm going to look at, look at and consider. But it doesn't have to do with the active crisis. No, it does. It doesn't. But in response to these things, we know that there are known failures mm -hmm. of this. Uh, we saw, for instance, deposits perform in a different way than regulators assumed, that uninsured deposits left at a more rapid rate than the insured deposits. That's a new phenomenon. When we have the speed of Twitter and a bank run uh, and the speed of electronic banking, those things are things that we need to look at legislatively and regulatorily. Yeah. The question of performance of bank executives, we certainly need to look at that and make sure that yeah. they're aligned with consumer protection and depositor interest. Congressman, we'll be watching your upcoming hearing. Thank you. Face the Nation will be back in a minute. Stay with us.